You know, I will never understand how you scribble a few things on a piece of paper in five minutes come up with something this gorgeous. That's not mine. It's not yours? Then who? Amanda. Amanda? I didn't know she drew. You have some mighty powerful genes there, Rachel. I hope Jasmine inherits them. What's the matter? Well, she doesn't draw, not like that. She hasn't drawn in years. She's behaving very strangely. I walked out onto the terrace. She was holding that sketch and looking at it as though she couldn't remember drawing it. Well, isn't that how it is with you creative types? I mean, you go off into your own little world. Not like that. I asked her about the fountain where it was. I was wondering about that. It's very beautiful. She didn't know. Oh, well, I mean, maybe she just saw it in a movie and didn't remember. Or maybe it just popped out of her imagination. Maybe. But there's too much going on with Amanda these days that doesn't make sense to me. She's not behaving herself. And I have a hunch it all goes back to Julia Stark. Amanda! Amanda! Are you in there? Amanda! Late, isn't it? I shouldn't be here. You have every reason to be here. I don't, I don't know. It seemed like a good idea when I, when I knocked on your door, but now I don't know why. What is wrong with me? Why can't I remember why I'm here? Don't worry. It'll come back to you. I'm sorry, I don't think we heard you right. Marley's suing us? On what grounds? I told you, obstruction of justice. Now, you used Marley to deliberately mislead the police after Grant's death. But that's absurd. Death. She wouldn't send you here to threaten her own family. You don't think she has just cause? Anyone who would take advantage of a woman whose mental state was obviously compromised... Now, you wait a minute. No, letting her take responsibility for a crime that she didn't commit constitutes a clear violation of her civil rights. Now, you knew she was innocent. Yet you were willing to let her take the rap for what you thought was Vicky's crime. And you know exactly how and why that happened. It was Marley's idea. I'm the one who didn't let her do it. Now you're trying to trying to twist it around like we tied her up and no, forced her. No, because you see some again. Tyrone. Vicky's not the one who did any tying up. Marley tied her up. As a matter of fact, Marley's the one who kept her prisoner. But you know something? We'll just forget about that. How about that? Well, I'm not going to forget about anything, and neither is Marley. Because every day. She has to live with the horror of an illness that has taken her to hell and back. Hell, hell, I'll tell you what. We know how. You know why? Because Molly brought us there. Yeah, well, she was sick. You don't have that justification. Now, what you did to her, what all of you did to her, you did with your eyes wide open. You just didn't give a damn. You shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. Now, let me tell you something. You have crossed the line. Don't make it any worse. I cross the line? That's a little funny coming from you, Jake. What's that supposed to mean? Look, I'm not even going to get into what this family has done to Marley. But I'm still hoping we can stop short of a courtroom. But that's only if you agree to do the right thing. Uh, now, if you agree here and now to give supportive depositions for Marley's bail hearing... What, but... what, what, what happened to... Let, let us give some time to think about this. That's what we agreed on, Tyrone. Look, Marley can't afford to get more and more isolated while we wait for you to make up your mind. There's a limit as to how much she can improve in an institutional setting. Now, she needs to get out and get back into a familiar environment. What this is, my friend, this is legal blackmail. Oh, no, 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 no. It's called getting your attention. You got it. Now, you get out of my house. Wait, listen. 
Tyrone, I've tried to make this very clear from the beginning, and if I have to say it again, I will. We have been praying for the day Marley is well enough to come home. Right, we got to make sure she's all right. I don't see how a couple of months... Uh, tell me, Jake, when did you get your Ph.D. in psychology? Look, you don't have to be a shrink to see that Marley is still very, very fragile. And I just want to make sure that when she's in the outside world, the pressures aren't too much, too many decisions. I mean, all the decisions have been made for her while she's in the hospital so that she can focus on her treatment. Are you saying that's a bad thing? I see. I see. You want to keep Molly locked up so she's not around to remind you how bad you messed up. All right, let me ask you something. If I went to her and asked her if this lawsuit was her idea, what would she say? You're wrong if you think your sister doesn't trust my judgment. Here's what I think. She doesn't know a damn thing about this lawsuit, does she? This is all your idea. power of attorney means I have the duty to act on Marley's behalf if I feel her interests are not being served. And that's the question, Tyrone. Does Marley know about this suit, yes or no? Well, I'll tell you, Jake. If you force me to go ahead with this, I have every intention of explaining every detail to her, and she will not fight me on this, I promise you. So who's taking advantage of Marley's fragile state of mind now? Would that be you because Marley can't fight back? I'll make sure she gets your vote of confidence, Jake. Tyrone. I believe you. I believe that you're trying to do what's best for Marley. And I... I actually am very grateful that she has somebody like you who is on her side. Oh, come on, Donna. I'm trying to be fair here, for Marley's sake. Now, I haven't always done what's best to protect my daughter, but I'm trying to make up for that now. And we're going to very seriously consider your proposal. And we're going to give you a decision tomorrow or, or, or sooner. Just, just give us the opportunity to discuss it privately, if you will. If I don't hear from you by mid-morning, then I'm filing. We stand warm. Well, that's it, Don. Why don't you make nice with the blackmailer? That'll make everything fine. It's not going to do us any good to antagonize Marley's attorney. And you know as well as I do, we've already agreed that we're going to be giving supportive testimony anyway. No, you and Vicky decided that, Donna. You and Vicky decided You that. said that you were going to back her up. That was before Tyrone decided, decided to make everything ugly. What, am I the only person in the room here that thinks it's a bad thing for Tyrone to take over Marley's oh, entire exactly life? exactly what I've been worried about, this old underlying need for some man to come in and save her. No, no, no listen now. She needs another attorney. That's what she needs. You and I will sit down with her. We'll make her make her see that that's there's too much emotional stuff going on with Tyrone. We'll get Cass to take over. Marley knows him. She she knows he's good. No, that, no, that... no, no, no. Whoa, slow down. What do you mean, slow down? No, it's just you see, we'll get Cass, and you know, we'll, we'll help her with the decision, and we'll do we'll be doing just what Tyrone is doing. Wait, what do you want me to do? Th just give up and let Tyrone take over the whole thing? No, no. I just I think we need to go over there and talk to her, but not. Not just talk to her, we need to listen, too. I don't want to make any decisions that Marley doesn't agree with. Even if she doesn't understand how important this is, Vicki. If you can't go along with this, Jake, then I need to do it alone. Amanda, just tell me that you're all right, and then I'll leave. Cameron, what's going on? Man, I'm... I tried to get over the wall. I just wanted to hear me. Well, believe me, if Amanda was on the other side of that wall, she'd hear you, but she's not, so save your breath. How do you know? That garden has been off limits to us ever since we were kids. There's an abandoned well in there, and my mom thought we'd fall into it, so she walled the place up, locked it, Probably need a machete to get through all the underbrush in there. And where the hell did she run off to? She was running? Yeah, she was upset with me. Yeah. You give her a reason to be? Look, I, I know that this is going to sound ridiculous, but Amanda has not been acting like Amanda. Last night, I came over to give her some good news about my brother. She's out on the terrace. It's freezing cold. She didn't even know how she got out there. Then when I brought her inside, she complained about a headache. So I went to the kitchen to get her some aspirin. When I came back, she was gone. Where'd she go? 
I still don't know. Allie and I, we searched the entire house. Then I went out onto the grounds, and for some strange reason, I was drawn to this garden in here. And she wasn't here? No. So I went back, and then David shows up with Amanda, and he starts spinning some story to Allie about how I had forced my illicit, illicit intentions on her or some crap like that. She didn't contradict him? No, but she seemed... You know, she seems really confused. Like she couldn't remember? Exactly. And then I kept waiting for her to call David a liar, but she didn't. This doesn't sound good. I mean, I have been going out of my mind. Amanda, it's not that... She, she doesn't go running anymore. She doesn't dress the same way. When I look at her, it's like she's looking right through me. Now, she told me to get lost, but I am not leaving until I know what the hell is going on. Well, that makes two of us. Let's get back to the house. Maybe somebody's heard from her. And we checked the whole property. I don't think oh, she's on it. She didn't try to drive with those headaches she's been having. No, her car's here. She may have taken a taxi. I think we'd better start calling her friends or something. I have a feeling I know how to find her. Excuse me. She's all worried that Jordan Stark is mixed up in this. You think she's right? I don't know. She said that something has taken over Amanda, taken control, just like what happened to you. I'll tell you who's taking control. It's not that Jordan Stark. It's that David Halliday. satisfied with dreams. Like imagining the fragrance of you. The softness of you. you. Do not disappoint, my darling. I want everything. Everything I need. What's happening? Something we both want. No, no, I don't think so. Shh, shh, shh. Don't, don't think. think. Don't think. Feel. Feel how I long for you. No. Let me show you how much. No, no, it's not, it's not good. It's wrong. It's... Shh, 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 shh. It's not wrong. Love is never wrong. No, please, I... please, don't, dick, dick, don't hurt me. Shh, shh, shh. Please, I, I, I could never hurt you. Please. Forgive me. Forgive me. I, I, I've obviously misjudged the moment. It'll be all right. You're right. I can see that. It's too soon. I should, I should go. No, no, no. You're tired. You're very tired. You need to rest. Can't you feel how badly you need to rest? Yes. Stay with me. I'll keep you safe while you rest. Sleep, Amanda. Oh, the world is too much with you. You haven't let go of your family. Cameron Sinclair. But you will. Almost there, Amelie. Felt it. 
A few moments ago, when our lips touched, I could feel your spirit. It was on fire. I was trembling, fighting to break free. And it will. And then we'll be one again. Forever. I thought you weren't coming back till tomorrow. Yeah, well, something came up that I need you to know about. It doesn't sound good. Yeah, well, it, look, it could be good. It could be exactly what we needed, but I need you to keep an open mind. All right, I'll, I'll try. Just tell me what it is. Right, remember how I promised that I would do anything to get you out of here? <laughs> you already have. I, I'm so glad Jake and Vicky are even thinking about it. Yeah, well, uh, I went a step further. Frankly, I felt a too, little too much resistance there, especially from Jake, so I upped the pressure a bit. What do you mean? Look, Marley, it's my responsibility to see things more objectively than you can. Like what I was telling you before, you, you keep blaming yourself and saying how you wronged your family, but you forget that they wronged you as well, all of them. Tyrone, what did you do? I told them that unless they support us in our bid to get you out of here, that I'm going to file suit against them for obstruction of justice. Obstruction of justice? Yeah, that's what it was when they were planning to let you take the fall for murder and Grant. No, no, that, that was my idea. Yeah, but the idea of someone who's in treatment for emotional illness, and they still let you go to jail. Well, no, no, they didn't let me go to jail for very long. Victoria came but forward, Marley, you that's know, besides she... the point. They shouldn't have allowed it, not for one hour, not for one day. It was cruel. Well, I have done a few cruel things too, oh, Tyrone. Well, there you go again. It's always your fault. Well, some of it is, a lot of it is my fault, and unless I learn to take responsibility for that, I'm never gonna get well. Yeah, what about your family's responsibility to you? Well, I'm not gonna buy that with a lawsuit. Like we were making so much progress too, and I felt like Vicky and Jake were starting to see that I really am getting better, and now they're just going to hate me. You have to go back to them. You have to go back, and you have to tell them that no, we're going to drop no, the lawsuit. Molly, please, listen, you're not, you're not thinking. Yes, I am, Tyrone. I can't let you do my thinking for me, please. Molly, you need leverage here. Don't you understand? You need their help. Not next week or next year, but now. Now they owe you. And if it took a little hardball to make them see that, then so be it. Hey, you didn't waste any time putting your spin on that now, did you, Tyrone? Rachel, just leave. I heard a car. Yeah, I, uh, I was upstairs checking on Jasmine. <sighs> I checked on Jasmine, too. God, the mere mention of that Jordan Stark just makes me want to take that child and run. Don't worry, I'm not going to let anything happen to her. Or to you. I know. <laughs> I know you won't, Matt. I know that. I love when you get all protective about Jasmine. <laughs> You know how beautiful you look uh, when you hold She is the beautiful one. I mean, sometimes I just look at that child and I think I can't believe that something so perfect was entrusted to me. Uh, both of us. Yeah. Well, I can't believe it either. <laughs> I mean, the short time that we've had together as a family, I, I really believe that we've had more happiness than most couples have in a lifetime. If it has to end... What do you know? Not if. When? It has to end, Matthew. It, it, well, it has to yeah, end. Yeah, for now. Please don't start. Listen, you don't have a crystal ball. You, Cass could hit a bump in the road. I know, I know, it's never gonna happen. But if it does, I'll be here. Hello? I am so sorry to disturb you, Mr. Stark, but, um, Ms. Hutchins is here. Rachel? Yeah, I've explained that you have prior commitments this evening, but she won't leave until she sees you. Well, if she won't listen to reason, let her wait. What do I care? <laughs> of course. How long? Any, any idea? As long as it takes. Amanda, I'm, uh, I'm sorry the, the phone woke you. Oh, uh, no. I should be the one who's sorry, actually. When did I get here? Did, it, did I drink too much or something? I don't remember. No. No, you, you had nothing to drink. You just were feeling very, very tired. And, well, I wanted to make you comfortable so you wouldn't have to go all the way home. These memory lapses are really starting to get kind of scary. The headaches, I guess I've got to call a doctor. 
I must be sending some pretty strange signals. Oh, no. No, not at all. You, you're just exhausted, and I, I consider it the highest compliment that you felt comfortable enough to fall asleep in my presence. Well, I'm feeling better now. And my head doesn't hurt. So, uh, I'm, I'm gonna head home. Well, I'm... Um, good. That's fine. I, I'll drive you. No, no, that's okay. Really, I, I've... I've imposed on you way too much already. It... I'll... I'll be fine. Good night. Damn you, Rachel. I'll teach you to interfere. Why don't you say goodnight, Tyrone? We need to talk to Marley alone. Not a chance. Tyrone, come on. You've been alone with her a week at equal time. What, do you think I'm going to leave Marley here alone so you can manipulate her? No. You do it too well. So say what you have to say and get out. I hate to break it to you, Tyrone, but it's neutral territory. You don't make the rules here. All right, Neither stop. You, stop. Can you both just stop it? Let's just stay calm. It's very calm here. That's one of the things that I have learned to like about this place. I know you're angry. Probably very angry. I'm not angry. Me. I'm not angry. I know this lawsuit wasn't your idea. No, it wasn't. No. Right, we know that. We know right, that. I mean, I, we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again. I know that Tyrone was just doing what he thought you wanted him to do, but he was wrong. Don't put he? words in her mouth, no, You're the one that's been doing that, Tyrone, and you're not going to do it anymore. Listen, you need a new lawyer, Marley. That's what you need. A new lawyer? Well, just somebody who's going to make you a part of the process. You see, you need to stand up for yourself, Marley. You can't do this no. damsel in distress thing anymore. You're beyond it. It doesn't work. It just ends up being a trap. You know that better than anyone. You, not to mention, your friend here has been highly unethical. You think he's been waving lawsuits around because he wants justice? No, Marley. He wants to keep the pot boiling, because that's the way he keeps his name in the paper. He's, he's too afraid your case is going to get buried in the, in the back of the paper with Grant's murder taking up all the ink. Listen, he, he latched on to you, Marley, because you mean headlines, and headlines mean legal reputations, don't they, Tyrone? You really believe that's why he took my case? Among other reasons. Oh, I see. So you can't imagine that he might actually care, that he might actually believe in me. No, no, no. Jake was just saying I know that he... what Jake was saying. I heard him loud and clear. That no one in their right mind would defend poor, pathetic, crazy Marley without an angle. That's not even close to what I meant. Well, you'll have plenty of time to explain to us exactly what you meant when you... when you come testify in court. Marley! I was you... going to drop the whole thing. I was going to get rid of the whole lawsuit. Thank you. Thank you very much for changing my mind. Marley, you are so wrong. We don't think of you as someone who needs Tyrone's kind of charity. We are blown away by how far you've come. And wherever I am, I would not be there if it weren't for this man right here. Do you understand that? I would not be alive. Did you hear anything she said about the damsel in distress? Tyrone is the only person in my life who has ever put my interests first. Well, it's okay. They're not going to listen to No, anyone. I will make them listen because you have done more for me than any lawyer ever had to. He hasn't just defended me. He got me medical care. He checks with my doctors constantly. He worries about whether I'm eating enough. He visits me. He brings me books he thinks I might enjoy. Do you know what he's been for me? He's been my family, and it's been a very good thing because there were times when I... I didn't know if I had one anymore. I don't think that's entirely fair. When you and Jake had each other to care about, Tyrone cared about me. He begged me not to volunteer to go to jail for you, and I, I didn't listen, but he was right. He was right because it's not enough, and it will never be enough because you don't care if I stay in here for the rest of my life. Good job, Tyrone. She's got her to prove my point. And what point is that, Jay? I didn't question her stability, right? Is that not the question? She just went from A to Z in about 60 seconds. Now, how do you figure that makes her strong enough to get out of this place? Look, could we just get back to where we were when I first got here, okay? I don't know if that's possible. Well, wait, you expect her to forget about everything she just heard, everything she just saw? Just pretend it's you and me here. Just you and me. the rest. 
Any more pressure from you constitutes verbal harassment. Is that right? What are you going to do? You're going to slap us with another lawsuit? Is that it? Go ahead. You're making this uh, malpractice a real art form. So what are you saying? What are you going to countersue? You got that right, Tyrone. But I'll tell you what, you better get a better lawyer than you because you're going to need it. No, you do not. No. Don't ever do that again, Tyrone. Do you understand? Promise me. Marley, I, I was just trying to do what was well, best. Well, I have to decide what's best for me because my sister was right about one thing. If I don't stand up for myself, then my life isn't going to be my own. I love Cass. And he loves me. Mm. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is that there's two kinds of love. One is butterflies in the stomach. And the other sneaks up on you so slowly you don't even know what's happening yeah uh, you know we really have to stop doing this doing what you know we start talking about one thing and then we end up talking about us look i don't I don't blame you, all right? It's the situation. It's really not very healthy for me to keep living here. And so I think as soon as the divorce papers are final, then we can make a clean break. As a matter of fact, Cass said that they might arrive today. So I, I, I'm going to just go um, over to his office Listen, I, and I, see I, if... I, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. I apologize. You, you didn't, all right? I was going to go over to the office anyway. But uh, we got all worried about Amanda, so... Um, I really hope that your mother finds uh, finds her. I, I'm gonna see you later. Did you find it entertaining to invade my office and browbeat my assistant? Allow me to inform you that it wasn't amusing when I considered you a friend. And it is far less so now that you are decidedly not. No, we're not friends. Mrs. Hutchins, I have gone out of my way to show you respect. If you cannot return it, if you insist upon interrupting work that has taken me months to accomplish simply on a whim... Oh, this isn't a whim. Not at all. Since the last time you and I were together, my daughter has gone from bad to worse. Now, I warned you, Mr. Stark. I warned you I would not tolerate anyone harming any member of my family. This is Amanda you're speaking of? When I found you on my terrace, you had just done something to her mind. First my son, now my daughter. And don't you insult me by saying you didn't do anything. Hmm. I can't be expected to take this seriously. You can take it any way you like. But people generally regret underestimating me. I see. It is clear that you are genuinely distraught. Whatever is amiss in your family... You... I was mistaken about you. What is grotesque... He's not just on the outside. Whatever is going on in the inside is far more terrifying. You are trying to interfere with an innocent young woman's life. That woman is my daughter. You may not use her as a laboratory rat. Oh my Mr. God! The Stark. mad scientist scenario. I don't know what you are, who you are, why you're doing what you're doing. But I do know. If you continue to try and harm any member of my family, that will only bring you face to face with me. Strong words. You undo what you've done to Amanda. Or what? Or I will make your life a living hell. I hate to spoil your fun, but it will be difficult to ruin a life that was already ruined a long time ago. Trust me, I can make yours much worse. You have a grossly inflated sense of your capabilities. No, my capabilities are rather modest. They just happen to be the ones that will hurt you the most. How, may I ask? I don't know you very well, Mr. Stark, but I know what you loathe, public attention. I happen to be in the publishing business. 
Writers who covet an exclusive paparazzi who salivate at that thought that they can catch a recluse in a freeze frame. And it's all a mere speed dial away. I know how to deal with those people. One or two curiosity seekers, but a carefully orchestrated expose of the cult that's going on inside these walls, of the hidden room where you keep the alien spacecraft. Rational journalists never treat such rumors seriously. No, but tabloid journalists just love them. And by the time the rational journalists get to you, your face will be on the cover of every tabloid in the free world. May I use your phone? sick about you. Where was I? Yeah, you were you were upset and you left. Where did you go? Were you with Halliday? You don't have a right to ask me that question. Well, I'm asking anyway. David is a good man. If I believed that for a second, Amanda, I wouldn't be here. He's a liar. What he said the other night about us. Are you listening to me? David is a good man. What, do you have feelings for this guy? I don't know yet. But just now, you came through the door, you hugged me. What did that mean? I was glad to see you. But you were so mad at me before, what changed? Amanda, what are you saying to me? No, 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 no don't, you're hurting me. What, are you getting those headaches again? I'm, I'm very tired, that's all, and I'm confused. I'm confused. About what, Halliday? I, I don't want you to ask me any more questions now. I think I'm just going to say goodnight. Amanda, look, I, I, I only came over here because I thought you weren't well. I thought, I thought that you were sick. I, I wasn't feeling well. I'm, I'm all right now. I want you to be all right. I, I want you to be happy. Even if it's going to be with, uh, with David. Uh, but I need to know the truth. I don't know if I know the truth. But I know that I need some time. Some space. Space. She's letting the suit stand. Our punishment because we decided to badmouth Sir Lancelot. Does anyone hear anything about Tyrone? She thinks he's the only person who's fighting for her, and I keep trying to explain she needs to fight for herself. Yeah. Listen, we got to get that guy away from her. The first order of business for me tomorrow is to figure out a way to revoke a power of attorney. No. Well, no, no, what? No, well, let me tell you something. She's suing us. We have no choice but to countersue her. She's not going to sue us if we tell Tyrone we'll cooperate with him in helping her get out of Willowdale. Now, I suggest we call him right now before this thing gets any further out of you hand. You call him. You do it over my dead body. Well done. Why are you caving in? This thing is never going to go to trial. Oh, you're always so sure of everything, aren't Listen, you? Marley's release is not the only thing at stake here, okay? She's also got to stand trial for kidnapping, at which Vicky's testimony is going to be a big deal. You think they won't sue because they're afraid I'll retaliate? Why cave in when this blackmail thing is just an empty threat? I hate this. We're talking about Marley's life here, and we're reducing it to a negotiation. Which Tyrone Montgomery started. I don't care who started it. I want my family back. I don't want to go through one more Christmas without both of my daughters under the same roof. I say, to hell with saving face. Wait, that's what you think this is all about, huh, Donna? Oh, you saving bet I face? do. You bet I do. You and Tyrone circling and sniffing around each other to see who gets to be the alpha now, male. Now, hold on. I think that's a little oversimplified. Fine. If you think it's worth winning a couple of points in the first round to lose your sister all over again, great. you in the middle of this, you know? Yes, that's pretty much where I am, isn't it? I'm 
understand what she's saying. I mean, I'm all for peace and understanding, too, but not at the expense of what's right and fair. And after the one idiot your sister did, I just don't see that it's right to let her out. I don't know what's right anymore. I'll tell you something. If your sister's not able to cope and they let her out of there, none of us are safe. For me, the uh, gift shop in the lobby was still open. Very pretty. I, uh, I, I was hoping that this could be a, a peace offering. So, Molly, I am so sorry. I know. But... I'm just afraid if I take these, it'll be like saying that what happened tonight wasn't so bad, but it was. It won't happen again. Promise. Promise you'll run everything by me. Total honesty. I promise. I'll run everything by you. Total honesty. Well, then, I accept. <laughs> How did you know these are my favorite? Well, actually, uh... <laughs> I didn't. They were the only ones that were left. <laughs> so how's that for total honesty? It's a start. Hoping you were back from Chicago by now. Oh, I didn't know anything. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Wait uh, a second. Have we met? You look very familiar. I'm sorry, but my phone is out of order. Don't you just hate that? Hmm. Well, I just happen to have my cell phone with me just in case. Yeah, perhaps. What we need to do is both take a deep breath. I'm sorry. We're at odds here today. It's my fault. I started off by speaking rashly. Your friendship is very important to me. Friends you can trust. Friends you can find in. Friends tell each other the truth. You have fallen very short on all those counts. Excuse me. Yes. Well, I just thought you'd like to know that Amanda's back. Is she all right? Yeah, she, uh, she says she's fine. She looks fine, but she's not talking. I'll be right there. Was that Amanda? Personal call. Sorry. Ah. Uh, well, I hope everything's all right. Oh, it will be. If you remember my warning to you, you stay away from Amanda. Better yet. Leave town. I'll leave. But when I do, it will be with my Amelie. And your Amanda will be long dead. NBC Tonight. Get ready for a night of must-see TV you won't want to miss. On an all-new Friends, Ross and Chandler fight over the pizza delivery girl. Then on Will and Grace, someone's got a crush on Jack, and you'll never guess who. Followed by a fantastic Frasier and an all-new Veronica's Closet. TV just doesn't get much funnier than this. And at 10, 9 Central, don't miss a very powerful ER, the absolute best in TV. Tonight on NBC.